Jose Salcedo, um, one of the trainer and owners of Westside Boxing. And talk to us about the history of Westside Boxing Gym. Uh, Westside Boxing has been here for eight years, almost nine. Um, we start from nothing, and um, right now, I mean, a lot of people know us. <laughs> No doubt about it. How did you get into boxing? Uh, we've been practicing boxing since we, we were little kids. Uh, my dad always uh, have a pair of gloves for, uh, for us. And um, we, I put my kid in boxing too. Uh, and uh, I mean, we always love the sport and, and practice the sport. So, you know, me and my dad and, I, and my brother, we talked about it and put our savings together and open up the gym. And here we are. And you have one of the uh, most promising prospects at 126 pounds, Nick uh, Arce. Talk to us about Nick Arce's background and how he got into boxing. Uh, you know, it's funny because uh, the kid came by accident. <laughs> His mom was driving around and saw the gym and she came and she told me that she was gonna, she wants to put Nick in boxing because he was trying baseball and he was not paying attention. He tried soccer and he was playing with her. He, he even played tennis. So, you know, we, we, I told her I would give her a try out. He was one of the most annoying kids. I mean, he was just running around and... How old, how old was he at the time? He was 11, 10. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, uh, we put him in spot once. Uh, they kick his ass. He, he was... Uh, he was not happy. He told me, like, put me, put me back in two weeks. And I'm like, okay, put him back in two weeks. And he beat the guy. And, and then he's like, you know what, actually, I like this. You know, and we talked to him. And then um, we told him, like, let's go to the tournament. Let's go to the fight. And, and, and he did good. And he's here. And the kid's only 19 years old. He's 19. He's 19. Um, and he's 7-0. Um, and all. Uh, He did a... Uh, about uh, 70, 80 fights. Uh, he won a few tournaments. Uh, and he won the Golden Gloves at the age of 16. Yeah. As you mentioned before, he's seven and zero with six knockouts. In his last fight, he went the distance for the very first time in his career. Uh, the kid shows a lot of power and shows a lot of promise. What are you doing? Because in his last fight, he got a little wild. He went into to a few exchanges. Yeah. Uh, wasn't showing enough defense. What are you doing to correct some of those mistakes as a trainer? You know, that fight was tough. Uh, we asked for the fight. We know uh, Lizarraga was a very, very, very good fight. I mean, um, he was a tough fighter. And we told the matchmaker, like, you know, get uh, get him and, 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 and tell him for a month, a month and a half before, so he can be ready. Uh, we knew it was going to be tough. Um, we told Nick, he, he had the pressure that he won. He had uh, six wins and six knockouts. So he's like, I'm gonna knock, you, knock him out. I'm like, just wait for it to come to come. But you know, the people and everything, he came like to knock him out. And sometimes do, it's wrong. I mean, that's what happens with a young fighter yes. who uh, is entering his uh, seven pro fight. He's six and zero and six knockouts at the time. A little immaturity, you know. He's wanting to show the fight fans yes. because he has a growing popularity. He's got a, a great fan base. He's he getting very, popular, so he wants to deliver. He yes. wants to give the fans what they all want, a knockout. He's a very humble guy. He always talks to the people and everything. And, you know, he was 6 and awesome in knockout. He's like, I'm going to be 7 and awesome in knockout. <laughs> and we were like, just be careful, be careful. I mean, he showed a lot, uh, he did a lot of mistakes. Now we just went back to the drum board. We, uh, practicing the defense and um, now we got this um, opponent for uh, June 4 and we told um, the same thing we told uh, 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 the rep of Mashman that like, you know giving a month uh, of uh, training to the other guy because we don't want no excuses so we, uh, the month and a half we already knew who we were going to be fighting so now we're training like you know we're practicing the right moves and, and I think it's going to be better way better yeah, because he knows that he's not going to he's not going to knock everybody right. So who are some of the best fighters that you've seen come into your gym? Because you've had Canelo Alvarez, you've had Lucas Matisse, you've had Amir Khan, you've had Alfredo Angulo, you've had quite a few fighters. You've had Oscar De La Hoya here. Who are some of the best fighters you've seen in your lifetime? I think the one that impressed me more was Edwin Valera. <laughs> your brother said the same thing. Man, Not back, just back, the same back, thing. Back. I mean, he has little, a lot of power. Lot I mean, how, power. how intense it. I mean, was can, that energy? You see this guy? He came, little shorts guy. You know, I'm talking serious, put hand wraps and everything, and start getting the back. He destroyed our back. He did. 
So, I, this guy had a very small frame. How did he generate that power? Where did that power come from? Because if you remember, another smaller man by the name of Prince Nassim Hamed, who was only 5'3", in the featherweight division, would annihilate his opponents, would destroy his opponents, and somehow was able to generate such superior power over his foes. I mean, Evan Valera was incredible. I mean, you see the guy and you never think he's going to have that power, but I mean, when he was getting the back, you was seeing that. Even his training at the time was, uh, 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 he was doing the things. He was waiting those things like he like protects. Exactly. Like, like, and they ask him, uh, where, where are you going? This guy gets off. I mean, you can, you can, you can see it. He ripped her back. He, he did. How, how great could Valero have been if it wasn't for that dark side? Uh, Unfortunately. I mean, he, he was a good fighter. I mean, uh, but, um, he was, he was, he was Were there any remember. any signs that he had some psychological no, problems? Because like I said, he came in a limo, very humble, wearing his cap, like normal person and everything. And, and you know, we had a. I, I spoke to him and he told me, like, I'm just waiting uh, for Manny Pacquiao to give me a, a chance. That would have been a great I'm fight. Destroy that guy. He said that. And I'm like, okay. And, you know, but I mean, no, man, he was a very, very, very powerful guy. You know, there's a lot of theories that. um. There's a lot of theories. Uh, at one time, he suffered a, a bicycle accident. I yeah. think it was a motorcycle yeah. accident, and he suffered a, a really bad concussion. He so, exactly. Yeah. Some people think that maybe that's what resulted into those uh, psychological problems that he had, where the killing of his wife and then but committing was, suicide. Was very sad. Yeah. Very sad. Were you very close to him? No. He came once, and we were sitting talking. That was one, one thing. But, I mean, but you were very, you were impressed with what you saw. With the person you know, I mean, you feel something. Yeah. And I mean, he was very friendly and everything. And I mean, a lot of fighters came here already. A lot. And um, he was one of the most wonderful. Right. And of course, Canelo. He came here. He was training with the kids and everything. Uh, Amir Khan. Uh, Andrew Ward. Of course. Everybody. I was asking your brother before, where does Amir Khan go from here? after suffering uh, a brutal knockout against the hands of Canelo Alvarez. He was winning that fight in my eyes. I had him 5-0 to uh, zero in fun. favor of Khan, but uh, Canelo once again showing the patience, uh, fainted with that left and came over the top with the right hand. I mean, I don't think he's going to affect him because he lost one of the better boxes right now. And I don't think he'll bounce back. I mean, American is a great person. I mean, we talked to him before. My brother spent time on Oakland with um, Bridger Hunter. Right. And we, when he came here, he was like super cool and everything. And he's a good fighter. Um, I think he's going to come back and he's going to be give problems to the fighters at 147. And could we potentially see the fight that all UK fans want to see? Kelbrook? Kel Brook? Yes. I, I would like to see that. And who do you see winning in that fight? Well, I'm an American fan, so <laughs> I like how the fights and everything is friends, so I'll go for him. You know, Khan showed uh, some pretty good whiskers in the first couple of rounds because Canelo landed some good left hooks. Yeah. Do you think he'll be able to absorb those punches at 147? I think so. I mean, I've been telling people, I mean, if Canelo would have hit some, anybody with that punch, anybody would go down. And I mean, he got body, he got went down. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. He was doing a great fight. Like you say, he was doing, he was winning the rounds. He was moving, but threatening and boxing, if you make one mistake, exactly. that's what it takes. Exactly.